Hey guys. Well, well, how was that? Pretty good. And there's Mr. Turtle. He did such a good job. Yeah, we don't have room on the foredeck because of dude crush. So daddy found a different spot, I guess. I'm just making sure you can get on if you need to get on. Welcome aboard Turtle Crossing Sailing as we embark on an exhilarating journey from Hamilton to Trenton, Ontario, navigating the vast waters of Lake Ontario and presently traversing the scenic Murray Canal. This sailing adventure has been a long anticipated endeavor and the thrill of exploration is only just unfolding. Thank you, have a great day. You too, over. Almost there. Season three, here we come, bitches. We are going through the Bay of Quinty on our way to Trent Port Marina. We just put our foresail out, just because we're going so slow and it's windy, and it, it feels silly not to put your sail out on such a windy day. Uh, but we do have to stay inside these markers, so we're motor sailing. We're currently on this dock, we're... 4.3 knots. Yeah, so we're... the engine's just on idle, so we're making 4.3 knots just with the foresail. Oh, are we on idle? Uh, that's why the engine's so quiet. Oh. We're still in forward gear, but we're headed that direction soon. We are going to slip I-44 at Trent Port Marina. We're well ahead of our friends nine lives over there. I don't know if they they have a, a foul crop, so how, how did you like it? We've never been through here before. Uh, it's very weedy. I've got weeds on my rudder right now, I can feel it. So I don't know if it's just because they're trying to baby the crop, which probably is true. Um, but also they're a bit of a deeper keel than ours, so they're probably also trying to this is so shallow here, like it's crazy because yeah. like So we're at... We're in 15 feet of water. We dock in Hamilton in 33 feet of water. And that's the that's that's really shallow for our area. Like if you go out into the bay at all, you're 100 something feet down. Like always, there's parts along the shoreline that get shallow, but this whole thing is just a, like a bath. Like it's just shallow. So it's probably really warm and really nice for swimming. Yeah, tomorrow. two non-suches behind us. Which is weird because I thought non-such boat existed. Final the poach, you got a big boat coming out. They're tuning along pretty slowly. There wasn't a ton of traffic around us, but there was very little margin for error considering the depths around us were so shallow. Yeah, it is a tractor. But it's in the water. Maybe that's the dredger? I guess. Oh. It's already been dredged. What a funny looking thing that is. This is a pretty beautiful yacht club. 
uh, brand new, I think, five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Uh, so extremely nice, but it's gonna be extremely expensive. We're gonna have a dinner here tonight. We need to do laundry. Uh, there's a fuel dock, gas dock. There, it's harder to find fuel docks. Uh, we're in Hamilton and Hamilton has fuel docks and pump outs right there. So I assumed that it was just, oh, all marinas have this, but it's not the case. So it'll be nice to uh, fuel up. Uh, so we docked, no problem at all. There, there's two attendants here about to catch another boat. And we said, uh, they said, oh, do you need help? And we're like, no, we're fine. Uh, Sarah, Sarah handled it nicely. But her beige flag, as they say, as the kids say, so Sarah's got an issue where she listens to nobody. Uh, maybe not a problem. Wait, but, what? But Excuse since, me? So since we started racing, uh, Joan, the, the lady who's helping us learn how to race, uh, has told Sarah that those aren't good enough for where you need oh. You need something on your feet. Uh, it's dangerous. It's not safe. And so I was like, oh, she makes a joke out of it. Uh, but as soon as we got here, docked, no problem. Sarah uh, picked up our power line, our 30 amp cord. Uh, it's quite heavy. She dropped it on her foot, but the prongs first. And so the, the weighted prongs uh, scraped off the, the top of one of her toes. Uh, so uh, immediately first aid as soon as we're, we're docking because Sarah doesn't like wearing shoes while sailing. What do you have to say? What happened to your foot? It hurts. Would it hurt if you were wearing shoes? Probably less. Hmm. But think about how many more incidents I might have if I didn't have the feel of the deck underneath my feet so I knew what I was doing. Like that's why I like the no shoes is because I can feel the like contours of the boat and I can like kind of climb around like a monkey. Like, yeah, of course, like, it might be dangerous, but so is tripping over your freaking rubber sole toe, like. Yeah, I call bullshit, but let's, uh, let's figure let's, out where we are. Let's fight for <laughs> in the comments, guys. Shoes or no shoes? On our way into our dock, there was traffic. I said, there is something coming out. Looks like a tractor. So I was like, there's no tractors on the water. And then it just drove by again. And she's like, oh, it's a tractor water. Or it's a water tractor. But... I don't know what it is. Water tractor. We headed into town to get some groceries and do some laundry, and as per usual, I've lost some footage. But this is the meal that we made with the giant steak that we bought that would actually last us a good portion of the trip. We awoke with a plan to head back out onto the bay, heading for a destination referred to as Sandy Cove. But first, a quick stop at the fuel dock. We heard about Sandy Cove from our friends on Nine Lives the night before. We'd had some sundowners with them in the cockpit and chatted about everything to do with cruising, but mostly composting toilets. We're intrigued and may have to look into that upgrade after the trip. quite big in the middle here. It's a little bit tricky sailing because you have to go around all these spars because they're it's so shallow. So we're on our way to Yeah it's like a race course. We're on our way to Sandy Cove right now for um, a couple nights hopefully. Throw down our anchor. Are we going to stay Yeah we're gonna stay there. Oh I'm We really 
should have a whisker pull on that. We're kind of in a weird angle with the wind right now. We're approaching a very, very tall bridge. This is one of the few bridges where we can actually keep our sail going, I think. Do you still want to furl it or do you want to? There doesn't seem to be much traffic on behind us. Is that a yacht club on the other side? There's like a bunch of masts there. That's what I thought was sailboats, but I guess. Yeah, uh, I, did, I did see people sailing though. Yeah. It's a yacht club? Uh, I wonder if we have reciprocals. Watch where are you going? I think we have one. One night there? Uh, no, we don't. But we have one, there's a bunch more yacht clubs we can go back there. One sec, buddy, we're going under a big bridge. I gotta say this, like, parenting on a sailboat is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I talked to a lady who said she has two kids uh, and they took, they did like the Trent Severn waterway and stuff like that. One of her kids was like a babe in arms and she was breastfeeding and then the other one was two and she said it was a wonderful trip and they were great and then when the one turned three and the other one turned one it just went to hell the one-year-old was like climbing the mast and like fell down and got a concussion the three-year-old started telling like uh, like the mom would be like you you can't go past this line it's not safe so the three-year-old started trying to see if they could go past the line what they could get away with. She said that, that was the time we decided to sell the sailboat. <laughs> so yeah, it's, t it's conversations like this that make me glad I only have one. Oh, look at that. They're fishing on the yeah. Hope we fit. I always get nervous going on the boat. I know. I think we're 45 feet and I think this is 760. Okay, then we should be. Who's to say? This is the thing, we always end up coming back to this conversation and I think that the like leading argument for the reason why we got this boat is always the winning argument. Like, yes, it's too small. It, it's probably too small, you're right. You probably don't wanna live in a space like this with your whole family, it's small. But because it's small, we're very comfortable sailing it, docking it, like controlling it with the lines. Like, it's very easy that way. Uh, there's more, slips available to us because they can squeeze us into lots of places. The mast issue is not just about getting under bridges but also like for lightning, right? Like if you're in the harbor with a bunch of other tall masts, I never really worry that ours is going to be the one that gets hit. There was something else that we were talking about recently about space. Lots of things. Just have less stuff. Less stuff, yeah, but yeah, and less like it's a lot cheaper. Well, I don't know if it's a lot cheaper. It's still it's less expensive than some boats. So those are some reasons for going small and going now. Go small, go a year from now. Go small, go a year from now is Chris's motto, not mine. I've been wearing my life jacket lots. This is what I just said to Chris, I said, are you proud of me? I'm wearing my life jacket all the time. I know, I know, you're supposed to wear your life jacket all the time. <clears throat> but it's so much easier with these like Mustang ones because they're this is not an advertisement. They do not sponsor us unless they want to um, So yeah, reach out to me in the comment section Mustang um, But the the like size of them and the heat like isn't too bad. I can go in and out of the cockpit easily I don't feel like I'm Overburdened with a puffy jacket like when we did it overnight. We tied off. Yeah, we the, having that to be able to clip off to the side of the boat with our uh, Lifeline is really really good I was thinking about that. We probably shouldn't do it on the Lifeline. We should find something in the middle of the boat Because it's supposed to prevent you from going overboard not going overboard again. Yeah, yeah. but so I was hoping that it would clip onto here But it, the, the yeah. carabiner's not so, big enough. So I, I actually we can, we, I have a carabiner That here. you can put on it. Yeah, because I bought two for the dinghy and we need so we can clip it to here and then clip just it to there. Off yeah. There. I got some money. Oh, nice. Make sure you don't drop this it. This is freaking beautiful.
beautiful out here. It's so nice. There's some waves, but like it's mostly flat. That's tough. That's tough. I'm sure that there's points in time where this can be not fun in the in the bay here, but oh my gosh, is it ever fun? He wants to count. It's pretty nice. One, two, three. Not too shabby, right? Not too shabby. This is the happiest you'll ever see, Chris. <laughs> oh my god, he smiled! Whoa! I did that out. <laughs> We're just anchoring right now. We're putting the anchor down and then at some point when the wind dies down maybe we'll go and explore the shore. But mommy's gonna make us some lunch and then we're gonna have a nap. We have just anchored at Sandy Cove. There are two other sailboats anchored here. Uh, it is quite blowy. It's uh, like about 15 knots. Uh, it was supposed to go up to 25, Sarah said, so a little concerned, uh, might look for another place to go. Uh, we've never anchored in more than like 5 or 10. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how it uh, looks. I'll, sh I'll put the, the camera up, but it's going to make a windy sound, so I thought I'd talk under the Dodger. Sarah's about to make some cheesy noodles for Will. Something new and different for him to try. Yeah. 